I do. I, I, Matt Collins is going to ask the question, but I'm going to phrase how this question came up. Um, so last night I was watching Raw, as, as I want to do on Monday nights, and my, my friend Jen is on Twitter, and she is – she watched wrestling back in the back in the late '90s and early 2000s. I'm not sure if I would technically qualify her as a fan, but I know she likes to tweet about it occasionally. And this all came up when she was surprised that Chris Jericho was still wrestling, mm-hmm. and she began to. Uh, by the way, if you want to follow her on Twitter, her Twitter handle is at omg. It's Jen. Jen, I apologize for all the weirdo followers you would get who will listen to this show. Anyway, uh, basically, after that. Um, the Jericho conversation, she started to ask me about all the wrestlers that she knew of back when she watched. And pretty much every single one of them she asked me about, I said, yep, he still wrestles. He still wrestles. They still wrestle. Like she asked me about Tommy Dreamer, about Triple H, and she loves The Rock. So I was like, I'm like, oh, you should watch WrestleMania. The Rock's going to be there. What he's doing, we don't know. Uh, she asked me about the Hardy Boys. So I showed her a picture of baby Maxwell, who she thought was very cute. And she thought Matt Hardy looked 9,000 years old. So you can tell that's why we're friends. Um, but yeah, it, it led to a really kind of like it got a little dark when she started asking about Mike Awesome. But we won't get into that. But uh, it kind of led into. Um, what we wanted to discuss for the big question this week. And Matt, I believe you phrased it better than I did. Uh, yeah, I think the big question is, why do we still need all these old wrestlers? Yeah, I, I, it makes sense. And, and, and I want you to really think about it. like, hmm. Because there is a reason. It's because... We don't have any new wrestlers. That's why we still need the old ones. Well, here, here's the so thing. what the hell happened? So here's the thing that I'm thinking. If we're, we're talking about the previous generation and, and the people that were big in the previous generation, right? You know, who, who was main eventing? Oh, this is going to get really sad, actually. Now that I think about it. Who was main eventing uh, 10 years ago at this point? So we're talking 2005, right? Uh, you had comebacks of some people that are around now, right? I, I know Shawn Michaels, Strick Flair finally retired. Um, you, Randy, well, one, we have a rash of injuries, of course, this year, but still in the meantime, you have guys that probably would still be relevant and would still be probably wrestling in undertaker age and triple H age. If they didn't get neck injuries and concussions, I'm talking about Daniel Bryan. I'm talking about edge and hell, even Christian to a point, right? Or, mm-hmm. or, you know, think about some other, unfortunately, some that have passed. Like Eddie, yep, Gr- Eddie, Eddie Guerrero. You, you, you don't throw think those guys in there? If, if, if you can throw other guys in there. You can throw guys like Test, right? You no, know, right. If Test, you know, there are a lot of guys like you know, and, and maybe we're making assumptions. I don't want to make assumptions about people who are dead, but you know, guys who maybe if they're a little bit luckier in their health, or maybe taken better care of themselves, or avoided certain pitfalls that come upon anybody in all sorts of fields that we could still have some of these guys around to still have awesome matches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, and I think to a point you do have, I feel like Jericho's from that generation. I feel like Jericho's from that Eddie Guerrero, Benoit, Dean Malenko generation, right? And obviously yeah. he is still out there and he is still super relevant, I, I feel. Um, but and, the thing with Jericho is mm-hmm. he's taken a lot of time off. Yes. He's pursued other ventures. Like, I, I think that has a lot to do with it. Like, the reason Batista isn't wrestling right now is because he's a giant movie star. Mm-hmm. The same with The Rock. Mm-hmm. Like there are guys who have just left to do other things. And I think uh, Jericho is also kind of a he's kind of a freak in a way. I mean, he doesn't get hurt. He's been extremely fortunate over his career. He does dude does not get injured for mm-hmm. one whatever reason. Um, Super cautious in the ring, I, I suppose. Um, but no, I think that's the other thing too. Is there are other options, and people are taking on those other options, right? Um, you know, e- even looking at something with somebody like Edge, who is doing something different, you know, outside of his injury, or or you know, you can't think that Stone Cold wouldn't be around in some vein right now if he didn't get injured, right? Especially with this WrestleMania in Texas, right? Right. Yeah. I, I I can't imagine you won't see Stone Cold at WrestleMania. Right. And now I get that maybe rock being advertised is more of a big deal 
since he's Mr. Fast and the Furious movie star, whatever, right? Uh, but you can't Although tell me. Rock's been at like the past five Russell movies. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if it's really that big of a deal anymore. Exactly, but but still, um, I think I think I. I, I I wouldn't even be surprised if like maybe a week before we do get a rumbling. Hey, Stone Cold will be there. It's not like Stone Cold isn't around. He's obviously actively doing things as far as the podcast goes, um, and, and that's about it, of course. Um, or or they used to truck him out for the Legends kind of open, you know, the Legends nights they used to do when they had the random three hour Raws instead of like every week or the old, raw old schools or anything like that. Um, no, I I think it is just the nexus of of the rash of injuries rash of other opportunities and and did we really build anybody as big as that flux of people that we had then and plus other opportunities in the fact that we have the hardy boys that are, have been everywhere but wwe for the past five years right like what would mm-hmm. they be doing if they were around you know maybe jeff hardy would be an even bigger star if he stuck around instead of taking a powder after uh, the CM Punk feud or CM Punk. That situation. Sorry, Pittsburgh says they're sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, Kurt Angle. I mean, yeah, we know the reason yeah. that he left was he's partially health related and mm-hmm. maybe extended his career by a good long while by going to TNA. Um, where on Van Dam, you know, he had a lot of mileage left on him for whatever reason, just decided that it wasn't worth it to go through that grind anymore, take the lighter schedule. I mean, TNA, how much responsibility does TNA take for throwing money at these guys to work less dates in relative obscurity? Um, in their back, staying, in their yeah, backyard. They staying and away from us for a decade, you know? RVD. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. RVD. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I mean, Hulk Hogan, too. And, yeah. and, and, and that uh, TNA was relatively in the uh, retirement home backyard of all these guys in Florida. <laughs> this is true. I mean, let's think about this. It's like, oh, come on, work TNA. We film once a month, have a smattering of live shows that you probably won't come to anyways, and we're in Orlando. You're also probably in the greater Florida area. Uh, that's not so bad versus if WWE, right? Exactly. Because, so, I mean, what's the thing everybody complains about? That road schedule. and The travel and the toll. Yeah, exactly. 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 It's almost well, like if WWE did less road dates, maybe everyone will be a lot healthier. Which you do get, but you also get guys like Brock Lesnar coming in and doing minimal dates. Guys like Jericho coming in and doing just just a smattering of dates. Like I think, I, I and again, I don't know if that, I don't know if that contributes, but I think that the more that happens and the more you move your Randy Orton's and John Cena's to a schedule like that, the longer they'll be around, right? But at the same time. Do we want them around longer? Because that kind of just perpetuates the problem. Like, all right, um, my my friend well, there's Jen. A there's my, a big my, difference right now between a guy like Randy Orton, who is still in his prime, mm. and uh, Chris Jericho and Undertaker and Triple H and those guys who are clearly past their prime, um, still have a lot to offer. Um, but are those the guys you want on top? Let's let's um flip it to New Japan real quick, where you will see you know a lot. They'll put a lot of their you know legendary guys in you know multi man tag matches just to kind of like uh, you know in the opener. They'll send Jushin Thunder Liger out in the opener because dude can't work a one on one match you know every single night anymore. But you know people like to see him. Um, so ideally, is that what? You know, it sounds insane. No, no. But, you know, is that what these, you know, older guys should be used for? Put them in some, you know, put them in some opening tag matches. Let them groom the younger guys. You know, stuff like that. Well, I think you also uh, John, Cena, John Cena in the U.S. title. Okay. That's yeah. good booking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was good booking. You, you allowed Seth Rollins, a new star, to be the top guy. We like, have- I mean, Grant, he still got overshadowed by Cena at points, but... Cena was out of the main event scene and the product was better as a whole for it. Like uh, um, my, my friend Jen is listening live and she said that uh, like as an answer to the question is that the guys from 10 years ago are awesome. And that's because wrestling was a lot more popular back then. Like, like she's, she's a casual fan now. She watches occasionally. She thinks the guys that they're trotting out now, like Sheamus and Roman Reigns would get their asses handed to them by like, 
guys like The Rock and Triple H back then and stuff like that. Like, and she's not wrong. Mm-hmm. WWE is not building stars because they're resting on the laurels of the guys that were big 10, 15, 20 years ago. I think, and I think that's, that's important because um, you, you say, well, this guy's on top. You got to think like WCW, we had guys on top like Hulk Hogan, which couldn't turn in a good match to save his life. Right. Um, versus now we have, well, actually in the long run, Triple H and Undertaker can still go. Right. I mean, still like in, in a lot of aspects, these guys that are in their forties can outwork half the guys on the roster that are in the twenties. That's the problem. I think well, it's the- even even Rick, Rick, Rick Flair could outwork people well into his upper forties, you know, yeah. and you know he's the exception to the rule. I mean, that's you know, Jericho to Blazer, right? Know, and always. All right, we're we're losing you a little bit there, Matt. But uh, I I don't know if it's something with your your network or little whatnot. Robot-y. A little robot little robot a little bit robot But yeah, I mean, like I don't know if it's necessarily true that. Taker and all those guys can outwork some of the younger guys. Mm-hmm. I think the younger guys need to be given that chance mm-hmm. to be put on that big pedestal. Because so, when, if you watch the Undertaker when he was the same age as these guys, he couldn't work as well as he can now. No, no. Well, I mean, he didn't have to because he had Hulk it, Hogan. It's and all Warrior. time and opportunity. Like, and we've had guys who were able to take the mantle at one point, and the trigger was never pulled on them. Mm-hmm. Like Carlito was a guy that would have been really fun, like mid two thousands that could have been pushed. I remember going to New Year, New Year's Resol- Revolution with the Elimination Chamber. Carlito and Chris Masters trucked Kane, Kurt Angle, John Cena, and Shawn Michaels. If it wasn't for uh, Cena, you know, being John Cena at the end of the match. They, Chris Masters and Carlito were legitimate dudes. They were legitimate in that fight, and they trucked everyone else in that match. Mm-hmm. There is like, there's a gap. There's like a lost generation, and like guys like I know you guys don't want to hear this, but like Mr. Kennedy is part of it. Um, Carlito, uh, Shelton Benjamin, I'm trying to think of guys, John Morrison, um, a great example of someone who left. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Um, so again, so, so again, some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah McIntyre, Jesus, you know. Yeah, those guys were there. They weren't developed. They moved on, uh, and they missed the whole. They missed the train on these guys. I mean, maybe they'll come back. It'd be nice to think about that they might come back. And I love that Matt feel, uh, Matt sounds a like lot he, of these guys are like, like, like worth looking. I don't want to say worth. That's Matt, terrible. I apologize to everybody. Matt, I didn't mean to say worth. I Matt, guys are just we're Matt, not from. Is my, Matt, so Matt, 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 you sound like a bad auto tune. I'm sorry. Matt, Matt's using his funny <laughs> whistle. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. I don't, I, I, Matt you know, is channeling Carly Ray Jeff. Try to try to try to bounce out and back into the hangout. It probably, it probably needs correct right. there. Uh, we got some you other better. voices on here. Want to get some uh, quick opinions before we get to the mayhem mania, and hopefully Matt's uh, internet kicks back in. Uh, Bobby F J Town, I know you're in here with us. You popped in here. Hi, you just hanging Hi. out. You got nowhere. You got nowhere else to um, be. I was gonna say. Uh, look over Matt's shoulder, but since he's not here, um, mm-hmm. half of our card that are the qualified matches are future, hopefully future stars if they don't drop the ball with them. Right. We got Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Finn Balor. You know, they're, they're all on that board for a reason. That's who we all want to see. That's who hopefully they don't drop the ball on for the future. You know, I'm hoping they can build those guys up. But, but can you... Can someone really drop the ball if they're only holding it until someone passes it back to, like, a John Cena? Like, there's a reason that with with Roman Reigns not working that they defaulted to Triple H. They had other options, but they feel that using, like, nostalgia is a better way to go than trying to, say, push a Dean Ambrose. Yeah. As with any company, they're going to go, especially a company this size, they're going to go with the safe bet. They're always going to go with the safe bet. You see the same thing with movie companies, and this is an entertainment company. So you're only as good as your last buy, or you're only as good as your last match, or, or whatever, however you want to say it. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I, you look at uh, Ryan Reynolds was absolutely wrecked as a movie star after Green Lantern, right? Not his fault. Not his fault at all. Um, but, uh, and now Deadpool brings them back. So 
so what is it, you know, maybe it's something with these guys. Alex, I think you're back. I want to get uh, an opinion from you if you have one on this question as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so I just want to just clarify. So the question is, why do we need these guys from 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think the short answer is that indoor uh, attendance record ain't going to break itself. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, especially when you consider we're in WrestleMania season. This is usually the time that they will pull out all the stops. And, I mean, we've kind of seen it in the past, you know, I would say at least the past five years where they've relied on on, on their stars from, like, the Attitude Era and maybe even before that in order to try to make the WrestleMania card look all the better. I mean, you know, they'll do just about anything. They'll put in the celebrity. They'll put the celebrities into the matches. Uh, they'll do a gimmick battle royal. They'll do, you know, they'll literally do just about anything to make the WrestleMania card something that everybody wants to watch. Mm -hmm. So I think it just kind of comes down to like, I mean, and you know, with with the injury situation looking like it is, I mean, it just kind of adds to that whole thing. Certainly, certainly, uh, Matt. I, mean, I, oh, go ahead. I think WrestleMania sells itself though, because you have people buying tickets for that not knowing what the main event is six months prior. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, they're already selling ticket packages for SummerSlam. Do right. we know what the main event of SummerSlam is? No, but are people going to sell it out anyway? Absolutely they are. It, it'll probably be something to do with Triple H and Roman Reigns. I'll take, I'll take that bet. I will take that bet. All but right. Triple H will be nowhere near that main event. Matt, do you have any last thoughts? And I kind of want to test to make sure your connection is working. Yeah, how, how am I doing now? Am I doing yeah, better? Yeah, it's a lot better. I th yes. Yeah, I think it just got kind of jacked up on the end uh, right there. She's this this... The, the scope of this conversation is immense. Um, somebody just mentioned something in the chat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm I sorry. I'll, I'll read that here in the I chat. I just wanted to say real Go quick ahead. that we were talking about WrestleMania. Um, the last time, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going from memory. Last time WWE went all the way with a couple young stars at WrestleMania was Cena and Batista at WrestleMania 21. It wasn't a big arena show. It was at a smaller venue. They could afford to take the risk. Mm -hmm. The scope of WrestleMania – is almost acting against the opportunity for younger guys to get that chance because the pressure is so great to pack that huge venue. They have to go with a proven guy so that they can fill that stadium. They don't get, if they don't get 85,000 people into Cowboy Stadium, it's going to look ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's going to look empty. It's going to look like the old uh, baseball might be an stadium. Exaggeration. Uh, well, I was going to say, stadium if shows. they get 85,000 in Cowboy, 85, Cowboy Stadium, that's a fucking failure. That place can hold over 107. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and that's about what it was for uh, New York at MedLife, right? Uh, no. 70 some? Yeah. Med, MedLife was like 70, 80 something yeah. like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, I think it's time. No more stalling. Oh, baby. Well, we we no. do have a comment from Chet. Oh, I'm sorry. The, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, we do have a comment. Um, uh, from Tragar. Tragar. I, I got I got you. Uh, I think it goes to, to these uh, new guys never uh, had to grind it out, sharing cars and hotel rooms and outright slumming it just for the love of the business. Never had to write their own promos. As the product uh, gets more and more scripted, the newer wrestlers inexperienced in life is showing uh, whenever audibles are needed. Um, I Well, you could say that's that... that um, Piggybacking off of that, yeah, they don't know the, the current generation in WWE. They don't know how to protect their own characters. Mm -hmm. Steve Austin would go home if he didn't like what they were doing with his character. Shawn Michaels would refuse to do a job. <laughs> Bret Hart would would whine and complain. These guys would would convetch and whine and threaten and do whatever it took to protect themselves, to protect them, their brand, because they knew their living depended on them being right. treated correctly and no one else is going to look out for them except for them and now you've got guys just coming to work you know do my thing putting they're putting too much trust in the people who are in charge when they need to be paying more attention to their own best interests look, look at Matt, look, you look also have picture. to remember though th this generation also has to deal with social media mm -hmm. and they kind of have to be their gimmick almost 24 7 I disagree. You know what I, mean? I don't think any very few people are their gimmick twenty four seven. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that connects 
with that point, I, I think it's a thing to think about, but I don't think that's a that's a factor leading to our overall okay. discussion. I mean, I'm this. just uh, like it's not it's if, not it's not a Austin, non-factor. If Austin showed up and he had Twitter on the day that he was booked against Brock Lesnar of no build, he would have let oh, an yeah. angry Twitter stream oh, yeah. as opposed to just walking. You know what I mean? Austin Twitter during the Attitude Era would have been pretty awesome. Oh. I believe Austin would have used it the right way. Well, uh, well, well, the right we should make we should make fake attitude error Twitter accounts. Oh, I don't have time for that. I just started a Tumblr, <laughs> man. Let me live. <laughs> so we, should we plug that uh, before before we go on? It's this, not ready yet. Soon, soon. Not, it's not. Oh soon yeah, my minions, yeah. We still your we time is to work on it. If if you keep an eye out to some of the wrestling mayhem shows, social media, um, you're gonna find.